Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for the OPTC video, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the new PvP Zoro in some PvP and showcasing the power of this particular unit. Now, alongside Pirate Vessel Rare Crypt Brook for In Slashes came the Psy variation for Zoro. Now, this particular unit is very, very good. So is the Brook, honestly. Both of them work great because Slashes are so good within the PvP meta at the moment. The big downside to Zoro that Brook really doesn't have a problem with is the fact that his name is Zoro. There are so many other very good Zoros that go on to slasher teams. So this particular unit has to compete with those units. On top of that, this particular Zoro is more of a bench-based unit. But with the release of the character, did bring a bit more of a Psy slasher meta. Just like Brook with the in slasher meta, Zoro did bring this kind of funky addition to a team. Like I was saying though, his big draw is his bench capabilities. He's he's going to be so valuable off the back end of a side bench rather than something like a slasher bench or even in the front lines of a side team. However, he's still very, very good for what he's providing. So I did try and put together this like weird side slashery build with gear five in the front because gear five is very, very good. But one of the downsides I did find to this Zoro is that he's a driven character. If this guy was a free spirit slasher, would have made him so much better because you could run him in the front lines of a free spirit team, have the gear 5, 6 plus buffing this particular Zoro. But majority of the time, I did find if you do bring him in the front, he kind of just dies. Like, he, he doesn't really have that much tanking ability. Even at level 150, my boy Itachi was saying that the guy just, he just dies way too quickly because you really want to be in the back end of the last 50 seconds to get the second part of his special off, which is where he does majority of his actual damage. When you can get him to that last 50 seconds and he's still going strong, um, he can do some really, really nice stuff. His passive buffs side characters as well as slashes, so he has that weird sort of double up in terms of buffing slashes, buffing side units, and doing both, if you have both of them, it's very similar to something like Roger and Whitebeard, where they buff like Int and Psy and then the slasher meta. But, as mentioned, this guy is going to see most of his play on the, on the bench of either a slasher or a Psy team. On Psy, he doesn't really have any other Zoras to compete with. That's the kind of damage you're looking for from the unit, as you guys saw there against Dogstorm, getting into sort of pop off at the back end and doing like 12,000 damage. I believe the second shot does go through defensive effects. He then puts up like a counter mechanic and then does a bunch of damage anyway. But I do think this character is going to see the most play for the unit off the bench of the Psy team. However, he does seem to have the most uh, effectiveness off the bench of a slasher team. So. For myself, I really wanted to pick up this character because, like, Psy just don't have very good bench options. They have stuff like um, the 5 plus Shanks and the 5 plus Garp as free to play options, but then really all they have going for them is stuff like Smoothie and Scopper, which are both slashes too, by the way. But um, this Zoro is going to provide a really, really nice buff to that Psy team in terms of what the Psy team's doing off, that, off, off the bench as well. But nevertheless, you can use him in the front if you really want to. As I was saying though, off the bench with the side team, he does really, really good stuff. It provides a much needed buff to what Psy lack in the sense of just really good bench units that can come either salvage the team or just do really good damage off the bench. Again, I really wish this character was free spirit and not driven because if you look at this lineup, we are running just the Psy free spirit team and a lot of the very good Psy characters are all free spirit. Rebecca Toy Soldier, Odin, Law, Momo, Shanks, Gear 5 6 Plus, uh, Yamato 6 Plus, all those units are all free spirit centric. And if you are building out that sort of free spirit team, Zoro coming in doesn't actually get the buffs. And that's a big reason why you saw me use the 6 star of um, Luffy on the previous team rather than the 6 plus because I had Zoro in the front lines and I just really wanted to keep him alive just so you could see the damage output that he provides at the back end of 50 seconds. But if you are going up against stuff like Roger and Whitebeard, if you're going up against stuff like um, Anniversary Gear 5 Luffy, the strength one, or if you're going up against units that can just blow away defensive capabilities, this particular Zoro at the back end of a side team is actually going to be really effective because he's going to come in with his special ready to go towards the back end of the 50 second mark. Now, the idea of the next two clips that you guys will see here is that I wanted one of my frontline units to die, so that way Zoro could come in, hopefully survive, and we could actually see that damage output in the last 50 seconds and showcase how powerful he is. However, I was finding that the Psy team was either too strong and it would just blow through all these challenge events. Obviously, Psy, in my opinion, it's, it's probably a top five team, but it's not the best team in the game, not even close. However, the Psy team against these challenge fights, it just wasn't having any, having any issues with 
actually taking down the lineup before Zoro would either come in or if Zoro could actually get his special off at the back end of the last 50 seconds. So I did go up against the slashes because Roger and Wipe have, do have a tendency to try and kill at least one unit. Um, that was my game plan here. However, every single time I got to this particular point, Zoro never had a chance to go off because the, the enemy just kept dying. So as you can see there, whilst he's a great addition on the bench for, for a bit of a safety net, sometimes you really just don't need it. However, this security blanket or this safety net does work very, very well when you are going up against a couple of units that can just sort of decimate your team. Like Roger and Wipe were one of them. But if you really, really want to do some fun stuff and you're going up against, say, Int, and you're coming up against characters like the new PvP Ace, you're coming up against like Six Plus Shanks, you have a Pooh or your Rogue, all those other units that are really, really good at taking down Psy but aren't affected by Wano Law. This particular Zoro is very, very good because he can come in late in the fight and basically just save it for you. Just like King does, just like um, other characters like um, Inazuma, um, Santa Sonia, those units that sort of just come in and then just blow away the enemy, blow away the enemy team. This Zoro can have that same effectiveness. Again, his huge drawbacks are the fact that he's not free spirit. Plus, he has that a very high cooldown and a very low HP pool. So sometimes he'll come in at the back end with his special ready to go. He'll be quite slow, and then he'll just die, which can be a bit of a problem. But again, like I said. Psy were lacking so drastically of bench options. Smoothie was really the only one they had. She recently got a level limit break at the moment and um, has a limit break expansion. So she is still a very good option. Another slasher character off the bench, so you're still getting buffs there. But the Psy team really lacks a lot of damage output if you don't have Anniversary Shanks. Without Anniversary Shanks, and by the way, he's buffed this season because he's a cerebral character. So he's sitting at 14 cooldown, which is just absolutely absurd. But without the Anniversary Shanks, you really have to bring something like Momo, who, look, is another slasher, so Zoro can buff, as you guys saw in the first clip. But without this Anniversary Shanks, the Psy team really doesn't do too much. You don't necessarily need the Yas up on the bench. However, getting that extra level 5 cooldowns does mean you can use his special so drastically, so dramatically, and so frequently that you're getting level 7 defense, level 7 attack, level 7 speed. You're doing a lot of damage to the enemy. And um, it just allows you to just tear through lineups. Now, this was like a perfect situation for me because Zoro came in at the back end. He gives the attack. He gives um, the um, the crit and all that, all that all that fun stuff. But he was pretty much raring to go with all of my other side characters dying due to the damage over time. Um, plus, he was almost at a point where we had his special. However, once again, as you guys can see here, it is six on three. However, they do have a Pooh and your Rogue who are all very, very scary characters when they have their specials. Coming up against Psy units, obviously they do a lot of damage. We just managed to squeeze a special in here, and this was like the perfect time to showcase how Zoro actually works. Getting a nice cheeky 9k through defense, taking out your rogue, knocking back the other two units, and letting Rebecca Toy Soldier do the rest. So I feel like you're probably not going to get much better than using him off the bench and sort of salvaging a run for you, but he does buff slashes, and the slashes team is... Pretty much already set in stone and, and has a lot of other very good Zoros on the team already. You have the Anniversary Zoro, the uh, Ashura, um, one from the start of the Wano fight against Kaido. Um, you have the Zoro Sanji new Super Sugo unit who basically finds a home on the Slash team with the ability to haste. However, with this sort of new PvP rare recruit situation with like Brook and all that fun stuff, Shiki as well is a very good character. You have Sasaki, you have PvP Law who got his level limit break. You can build out a nice chunky eight man slasher team. And Zoro can find a really good sp home on the bench if you guys are not using Zoro Sanji in the front. So I tried to design a team here that can showcase Zoro once again coming into the back end of the fight. I'm using all the strength characters and then going up against this quick team. So they can hopefully kill some of my strength characters, but they actually killed Shanks Buggy, which was great. I brought Shanks Buggy just to lower my defense instead of bringing something like Shanks Crew. Um, and they actually died very, very early. This brings Zoro into the fray very, very quickly, giving the attack buff, giving the crit buff, and I believe he gives defense as well. I can't remember exactly what that other buff was. Um, but now we're sort of approaching that last 60, uh, that last 50 seconds. Zoro is in a position where he's ready to go. So all we have to do is get him down on the, on the ladder. But for this showcase, I believe he pops off at like the 53 second mark. Unfortunately, once again, not showing that power of what he can do off the bench. So whilst his character does seem very, very good for these side teams and these slasher teams, getting him to work and function in his perfect way 
it just doesn't always meet the mark. Nevertheless, like, he's still very, very good. A great unit to own, especially if you are running Sai. He's just a fantastic unit to have on the bench. He's going to be a great safety net and going to be a character that you just go to as your first option, provided we don't get any other Legends Zoros for Sai or any other Legends Zoros that are good for slashes moving forward anytime soon. But like I said, the big downside to the character is his name's Zoro. Um, it is what it is, but... Um, he does work quite nicely if you have the unit. If you've tested him out, let me know in the comment section below. But while you're down there, belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.